So first organelle we are going to talk about in terms of protein transport is nucleus. Let's see how proteins are imported into nucleus and how they are exported out of the nucleus, proteins and other molecules. So first of all, let's talk about the nucleus first. Nuclear envelope encloses DNA and defines the nuclear compartment. Envelope consists of two concentric membranes, which you can see in this diagram that this is a double membrane. Nucleus is a double membrane organelle and they're penetrated, if you will, by these pores. Through these pores, the transport occurs. The inner and outer membrane are continuous and maintain distinct protein compositions. So these two proteins, inner and outer membrane, they are continuous with each other. However, although they are in continuation of each other, they have distinct proteins. So there are special proteins which are present in the outer membrane and then there are proteins which are present only in the inner membrane. So this is basically roughly the anatomy of the of the nucleus and we will talk about the nuclear pore anatomy in a, just a little bit. So the inner nuclear membrane contains specific proteins that act as binding sites for promotin and protein meshwork of nuclear lamina. So here you can see these fibrous structures. This is the nuclear lamina. We have talked about nuclear lamina before. It is a type of basically intermediate filament and that provides the structure support to the, uh, to the nuclear envelope. The inner membrane is surrounded by outer nuclear membrane, which is continuous with the endoplasmic reticulum membrane. So the outer membrane, it basically continues and it forms, is linked to the endoplasmic reticulum. So this is the ER membrane. So outer membrane is in continuous continuation with endoplasmic reticulum. The outer nuclear membrane is studded with ribosomes engaged in protein synthesis, not shown here. So the outer membrane is also studied, outer nuclear membrane is also studied with ribosomes which are in the process of manufacturing proteins and these proteins will be injected in the inner membranous space of this nucleus. Through the nuclear pore, there is a bidirectional traffic between cytosol and the nucleus. Many proteins that function in nucleus, including histones, DNA and RNA polymerases, gene regulatory proteins and RNA processing proteins are selectively imported into the nuclear compartment from the cytosol. So we know the genetic materials here. If DNA has to replicate, DNA is present in the nucleus. DNA polymerase has to come inside the nucleus. If we are talking about transcription, RNA polymerase has to come in when there is a cells receive a signal. And as a result of that signal, there's a transcription factor that becomes activated. It also enters the nucleus and that it also enters the nucleus through the nuclear pore. Also, at the same time, transfer RNAs and messenger RNAs, which are synthesized in the nucleus, they also come out of the nucleus through the nuclear pore. And they're exported to the cytoplasm, where, for example, messenger RNAs carrying a message will result in translation. Like import process, export process is selective. Messenger RNAs, for example, are exported only after they have been properly modified by RNA processing reaction in the nucleus. We have talked about RNA splicing. First, there's an immature RNA which is made, pre-messenger RNA, which goes through editing process. The introns are removed and mature RNA is, it is only the mature RNA which is allowed to leave the nucleus. Immature or pre-messenger RNA is never allowed to leave the nucleus. Ribosomal proteins are made in the cytosol, imported into the nucleus, where they assemble with the newly made ribosomal RNA into particles, and then they are exported again to the cytosol as part of a ribosomal subunit. So the ribosomal proteins are actually made in the uh, cytoplasm from where they come back into the nucleus, they assemble into the ribosome, and they are then exported out. Eukaryotic nuclear envelope is perforated by large elaborate structures called nuclear pore complexes, which selectively facilitate nuclear transport. Now, I don't want you to remember all these different terminologies, nuclear basket, ring subunit, etc., etc. Here, what I want you to pay attention to is that there are a set of about 50 proteins which are forming this hole. Through this hole, proteins or molecules, RNAs can move inside or outside the nucleus. 
we are going to talk about properties of this hole. This is about 9 nanometer wide in diameter. So we'll talk about other aspects of it, but I don't really care if you memorize all these other terminologies about this particular schematic. Each pore complex contains one or more aqueous channels through which small water soluble molecules can passively diffuse. Each complex is a molecular mass of about 125 million uh, Daltons and is composed of approximately 50 proteins called nucleoporins arranged in octagonal symmetry. I'll show you a micrograph which shows the octagonal symmetry of the nucleoporins making the nuclear pore. Small molecules, as I've mentioned, 5,000 Daltons or less diffuse in so fast the nuclear envelope that they are considered to be freely permeable to the nuclear membrane. For example, if someone injects a dye uh, and dye contains small molecules, less than 5,000 5, Daltons, you see actually un under the microscope, it immediately enters the nucleus. However, proteins uh, about 17,000 Daltons take about two minutes. Uh, and larger proteins, say about 60,000 Daltons, are pretty much unable to enter the nucleus. So there are exceptions where bigger, larger objects can enter the nucleus. We'll talk about them separately, but basically this is the thumb rule. 5,000 Daltons or less enters, diffuses freely in the nucleus and 17,000 Daltons about in two minutes. So here, first of all, I would like you to pay attention to the octagonal symmetry that we talked about. Here is, for example, a nuclear pore. You can see that there are about eight of these. It has an octagonal symmetry here and also in here. This is a transverse section of nuclear pore. It looks similar to what we saw in our schematic, which we saw a couple of slides ago. Uh, so here, here's a nuclear, nuclear pore. And this is the place where the transport occurs between the nucleus and the cytoplasm. Nuclear pore contains a pathway for free diffusion 9 nanometer in diameter and it is about 15 nanometer long. So what I'm saying is the diameter is about 9 nanometers and it is about 15 nanometers in length as we can see in this diagram. So small proteins or small particles can freely diffuse where however the larger um, uh, molecules have to be actively transported which means that energy has to be spent to bring them in. The more active the nucleus in transcription, the greater the number of pore complexes. So the nuclear membrane adjusts the number of pores in relationship to what that cell is doing. A nuclear envelope of a typical mammalian cell contains about 3,000 to 4,000 pore complexes. However, this number can change depending upon the cellular requirement. For example, a cell synthesizing DNA needs to import about a million histone molecules from cytosol every three minutes to package DNA into chromatin, uh, which basically means that each pore complex needs to transport about 100 histone molecules a minute. And also rapidly growing cells need to transport about six large and small ribosomal subunits per minute from the nucleus where they are produced and then they have to be exported to cytosol where they are needed. So basically, again, the, there is flexibility and the pore, number of pore complexes can change depending upon cellular activity. So we have talked about how nuclear pore, basically we have talked about the structure of nuclear pore and we have basically talked about the properties of nuclear pore and now we are going to see how transport occurs through these nuclear pores.